powerful since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the rest marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. And we have the awesome privilege of being uh, some of the pastors right here at Watoto Church. To our family joining us on air and online, you are most welcome. Now, take some time, share the link, invite a friend for service today. Because there is no better place to be than in the presence of Jesus. So true, and that's because God makes all things new. So while we lift up our hands today, while we worship God, while we sing, just know He's making something new in your life. So what other church, are you ready to lift up the name of Jesus? Come on, are you ready? Here we go, come on.
never fails us. He never fails us. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us. Right now, Lord, we believe you for healing. Right now, we believe you for everything, Lord. All that we need, we believe. We believe you for jobs right now. We believe you for that breakthrough, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father.
know, we are able to sing with that energy. We're able to lift up our hands today. We're able to jump with tears in our eyes. We're able to do all these things because we know who our God is. We have tested and we have found him faithful. He has fought our battles. He has brought peace in our lives. He has made a way where we saw no way. He has been a faithful God. And this is what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 10. It says, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the, the earth, making it bare and sprout and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. That's God's promise for you. That all that he has said about you, all that he has promised you, he is able to fulfill. And so right now, with that knowledge, with that confidence, I want you to come before your Father. I want, to come, I want you to come before God, lifting up your hands. Surrender everything to Him. There is nothing that is too hard for our God. Nothing too hard for your God. Our family watching us online and on air, I'm going to ask you to go into the chat room. Post your prayer request and let's believe God together for a miracle. child of God, I dare you to believe God for the impossible. No disease is bigger than our God. No dead is bigger than our God. With Him, all things are possible. All things are possible. glad that you chose to come to church today. Let me tell you, in the presence of God, there is all that you need. And my prayer is that today you will lean in 
and you will receive what God has in store for you. One more time, let's give God all the praise, all the honor. Come on. Well, welcome to church. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and find out what, what their name is, and then you can have your seat. Many years ago, I walked into this place as a little girl for the very first time. However, I do not remember that day. Why? Because I started from children's church, then I crossed over to adult church. But today, I want to make it memorable for someone here today. If it's your first time to worship with us, I would love you to put up your hand in the air. Yes, you are most welcome. You are most welcome over there. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Right here in person, our host ushers are giving you a card with a warm welcome later from our pastors, Julius and Vanita Rotlonio. And for those of you that are watching us online and on air, you are most welcome. We are family, and uh, it's so glad to have you join us today. And if that's you and you're watching online, I'm going to request you to go into the chat section because there's a link that has been dropped in there for you to click. We want you to leave us with your details so that we can connect with you during the course of the week. But if you are uh, on air, I'm going to ask you to write to us, connect at Watoto Church. Dot com. One more time, Watoto, why don't we welcome all our first-time guests? Awesome. And the best word that you'll ever hear is the word of God, because it's life to us. And uh, we're in a very beautiful time and season as a church, and today is our second week of our family month. And last week, we started a very beautiful sermon series about the health of our families. And my prayer is that whatever is being preached here, you're able to go out into your community, into your families, and you're able to do what we're asking you to do, what the Word of God is asking you to do. And right now, we're getting into that time where we get to hear God's word. And to bring God's word to us is a pastor, lovely pastor right here. He's our pastor to our marketplace uh, ministry. And so ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Pastor Ken. Come on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Tony. Sorry. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, our family online. It's great to be here. Uh, but before we start, I, I want to highlight something special that uh, uh, has been happening for a bit here at Watoto Church. Uh, I think I read this statistic uh, maybe about three years ago, but a National Planning Authority released uh, this statistic a while back um, that every year uh, universities release about 700,000 graduates into the market and only about 90,000 of them actually get work. I know, it's, it's one of those things that really needs to sink in. When you think about it, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, and I think for us, as a church, and as the church, we must think, first of all, go to God about such challenges in our community, but also begin to think of steps we can take that can help to bring a resolution or to this challenge. Those are too many people living outside their purpose. And so one of those things that God helped us to do was a partnership with One Hope and Southeastern University uh, to do a, 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 you know, a university program that allows our graduates or our, our, you know, students or, you know, from uh, Kampala, from Uganda, to connect to an education that is relevant to today at an incredibly subsidized price. And so today I want you to just uh, watch this video and then I'll come and uh, talk a little bit about our response to it. Hello friends, I would like to introduce to you an exciting education opportunity through what we call Missio. Now, as Watoto, 
collaborating with our global partners, we began to think about a way of how we can bring high quality education for the members of Watoto and anyone who is interested. And so through our partnerships with Southeastern University, the fourth fastest growing private university in the USA, we are providing bachelor's degrees, postgraduate diplomas, and even master's programs to help develop you professionally for a career. And here's the thing, you get to do it online completely at 80% discount of what you'd get it if you went to the United States. It's such an exciting opportunity. I mean, you'll get uh, programs on uh, business administration, organizational leadership, uh, masters in education, leadership and entrepreneurship. Name it, over 30 courses available for you. I want to encourage you. Take advantage of this opportunity. Here's what I know. For healing to come to our cities and our nations, it's going to take not just godly transformational leaders, but qualified godly transformational leaders. So Missio exists to make you that kind of leader. God bless you. It's very good. So the thing that we need to do, if you are here and you're a parent, you're a guardian and you have uh, a young person living Form 6 and you're thinking of good quality education, practical education uh, that can get them to uh, be not just seeking employment, but the kind that they can begin to be uh, people who create employment. At the end of the service, we have tables at the back. Please go and sign up. Sign them up, register, and we'll get in touch with you and find out about the next steps after that. Amen? Are you ready for God's word? I am. I am. Can we pray together and get into God's word? Wow. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We honor you, Lord, that first of all, you're here in our midst. You're present with us. You're present with us wherever we are watching from. We thank you. Your word tells us that when the foundations have been shaken, when the foundations have been destroyed, what can the righteous do? We thank you that we as believers know that you have clear direction on what we can do as Christians, as your sons and daughters in your word. And you tell us in Jeremiah that we need to return to the ancient paths. We need to return to your design of things if we want to see success, and if we want to experience your rest. So God, as a church, it's our commitment, it's our prayer, Lord. You open our eyes to these ancient paths, to your design that is in your word. God, work on our hearts. Many of us, all we have known is a, an understanding that might just have a, 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 you know, a, a warped way of thinking. We, we've, uh, the only thing we've seen is something that is not correct. But Lord, today, this week, we ask God that you will speak to us. Holy Spirit, we invite you here. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I am very excited about our Someone series because I'm very passionate about family. I think I think that family is really the bedrock of any society, of any community. As the family goes, so does the community, and so does the nation. And that's a fact, whether we want to believe it or not. It is true, absolutely true. And so we've been dealing with some issues and our series is on healthy families because it's important that our families are healthy. And today we want to look at strengthening the marriage bond, strengthening the marriage bond. A bond, a marriage bond is the covenant union and commitment between a husband and a wife once they exchange their vows before God. Now, why talk about strengthening the marriage bond? Why, why are we dealing with this? Because, well, last week we talked about three pillars of a healthy family. One of those was the marriage covenant between a wife and a husband. You know, statistically, you know, globally, 
there is such an attack on marriage. There's such an attack on marriage in so many different ways. I read a statistic that just in 50 years, divorce has grown over 700%. That's just incredible. And this is global. It's not just one area. Okay? Many people, many young people are living in an environment. They are growing up in an environment that was not the way God designed for a family to be raised or for children to be raised. So we want to talk about this. We want to talk about how do we strengthen this design that God has given to us. Because it's not enough for us to know it. We must also learn how do we keep it strong. I am fascinated by the way God does things. I love the word of God. And one of the things that really amazes me is how when God wanted to create a nation, he didn't go and handpick many families. He picked one man called Abraham. And from that one man and one unit, one family, one marriage, God created a whole nation. That's amazing. But that also gives me courage that we are many sons of Abraham, praise the Lord. And that means that we, if we just pick up the right principles, we are able to correct the wrongs we see in our society just by applying the right principles in our marriages. Praise the Lord. It's possible. And I thank God that it's not dependent on some policy, but it's dependent on us. In where the, we have a circle of influence, there's something you and I can do. Praise the Lord. Now you might say, Pastor Ken, that's an old story. That's just Abraham. They, what We want to see a, a present day story. There's a gentleman called John Edwards. He was a preacher in the 1700s. But he had such a great legacy because of how he raised his children and, his, and the strength of his marriage. Listen to the legacy of his family. These are the leadership positions his children held. One was a, U, a U.S. vice president. One of them was a dean of a law school. One was a dean of a medical school. Three were U.S. senators. Three were governors. Three were mayors. Thirteen were college president. Thirty were judges. Sixty were doctors. If I stopped there, we would give thanks to God, isn't it? But he continues. Seventy-five were military officers. Eighty were public office holders. One hundred were lawyers. A hundred were clergymen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay? And 285 were college graduates. Why? Because one man and one woman chose God's design and held together their marriage bond. Praise the Lord. Friends, it is possible for us to bring transformation to our world, to our community, through healthy families. And today we want to look at how do we strengthen? How do we strengthen this marriage bond? Number one, we strengthen our marriage bond by putting God at the center of our marriage. Psalm 127, verse 1 to 2 states this. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the gods stand watch in vain. We know here in Uganda, we sometimes hear of stories of buildings collapsing because they were not designed and built by trained, competent architects and engineers. Every strong, secure house is designed and built by a competent architect or engineer. Friends, I want to tell you, God is the master designer of marriage. God is the initiator of marriage. Marriage was not created by philosophies or philosophers. It wasn't invented by sociologists. Marriage was created by God. So we need to put God at the center of our marriages if we want to see healthy marriages. In the Bible, God has prescribed and communicated timeless principles on which we should build our marriages. Jesus told his disciples that everyone 
who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall, because it had been founded, or its foundation was on a rock. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 25. When God is at the center of your marriage and my marriage, we have an assurance that our marriages will withstand any challenge and storm. And the storms will come, and they do come. The two of us, or the two of you, your husband and wife, and God are like a cord of three strands that is not easily broken. The Bible tells us that. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12, it says, A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. However, three are even better, for a triple-braided cord is not easily broken. It's not. How do we put God at the center of our marriages? Some practical things that we can do. Because sometimes these things sound very nice, but how do I work it out in my everyday life? Number one, study the word of God together. Come to God's word as a couple, not just as individuals. Hear the word of God together. Let God speak to both of you at the same time. I always find this fascinating that God never told Eve not to eat the fruit. God told Adam. And I don't know what happened between there and, and telling Eve, but Eve trans started changing things. No wonder it was when God was calling people to account, he blamed Adam, says, it is your fault. <laughs> so I find it is very good when we both come before God and God speaks to both of us. Hallelujah. So that you're not saying, you know, God told me. And then she'll tell you, ah, let me wait for him to also tell me. <laughs> so let's go and study the word of God together. Secondly, fellowship with fellow believers. It's detrimental if you come to church maybe at different times or services. Sit and hear God's word together. Go for marriage sale together. Try, listen to People sharing when you are together. There is something about that that strengthens the marriage bond. Proverbs 13 verse 20 says, whoever walks with the wise or with wise people will be wise. Number three, practical things that you and I can do. For those who are unmarried, you need to embrace the biblical truth that God must be at the center of your marriage before you get married. It's important. For every one of us, if you are hearing this message and you are not married yet, give thanks to God. <laughs> yes, give thanks to God. Because you are receiving the right recipe for a strong marriage bond. That at the very beginning, as you're dating, you're, you tell the lady or you tell the man, if Christ is not at the center, we are not doing this thing. Secondly, the second thing that would help us to bring our bond in our marriages, to strengthen it, is delighting in your spouse. Adam burst into celebration, possibly a song, when God brought Eve to him. The writer of Genesis records that the man said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. It sounds like a rap, you know? <laughs> it sounds like a poem. The man looked and says, whoa, man. And, it, and she was named woman, praise the Lord. <laughs> but he celebrated, because you see, before that they had brought other animals and he said, cow. And he looked at the other and said, God. And they brought an elephant, lion. It is only this one where he says, whoa. <laughs> that might be Ken's version. <laughs> but it is obvious that at the sight of Eve, Adam was delighted. Song of Solomon's, 
Prov- uh, 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 sorry, King Solomon says in Proverbs 5 verse 18, he says, let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. A friend of mine uh, shared a principle that I thought was amazing. Because after a, a while in marriage, because we've been together for so long, it's very easy to begin to take one another for granted. And he said, you know, he took off some time and he was challenged to write down 50 things that he loves about his wife, 50 things that are incredible about his wife. And he sat down and wrote those things. By the time he was on number 20, he had fallen afresh with his wife. You know, the thing that we interface with regularly begins to become common. But that doesn't mean it is not a treasure. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you, friends, delight in your spouse. Make it a habit. How do we do this? Simple things. Celebrate your husband or wife. Make it a habit to praise and compliment them. I've said that. Second, lavish your affection on your spouse. Hallelujah. Some of us are gifted singers. Compose a song for your wife. Okay? Some of us are, you know, incredible poets. Compose. Don't go composing for other people. Praise the Lord. Some of us are good at different things. Let's provide these things for our marriages, in our marriages. I love to wash dishes. I know it's a weird thing, but I do. I don't like washing clothes, so we have a washing machine. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I, I, these are, from the beginning of our marriage, I told Trish, this is the one thing you should not worry about. For some reason, I enjoy washing dishes. And so I do it, okay? And it, it blesses her. And I get the benefits, which I shall not talk about from here. Hallelujah. All right. Second thing. Let me leave that one very quickly. Second, spend time with each other. Prioritize time. Prioritize time with one another. Spend quality time with your spouse regularly so that you can grow in your intimacy and in your knowledge. One of the things that I tell couples that are getting married, I tell them, listen, becoming one happens the day you, co- you covenant your love to your spouse here, spiritually. <laughs> but the physical becoming one has just started. It takes time to know one another. It takes time to get to that place where you can predict and know what your wife wants. At the beginning, you're going to make those mistakes of buying flowers, yet she wants sugar cane. Hallelujah. But over time, you get to know, you know, when I buy this, I score a thousand points. When I come and do this, I score 10,000. Why waste the time on 1,000? Let me keep doing this. Praise the Lord. Free advice. Okay. How do you celebrate one another? How do you delight in your spouse? Do things together. Okay. Go out together. Let you go and do hobbies together. Spend time one with another. Okay? The fifth thing, fulfill each other's sexual desires. Because depriving each other of your sexual intimacy opens the door to Satan. Our enemy is looking for a loophole to get in and attack your marriage. We're going to be talking about this in the coming summons. Now, single people, this is not for you. Praise the Lord. Be patient in this area. But, single, if you are single here, purpose now to delight in your spouse. When you're making that decision, is this someone you are going to enjoy spending time with? Let the decision not just come from they have money or they look good. No. Do you enjoy conversations with people? Because, you know, they are not going to always have makeup on. Moving on swiftly. Praise the Lord. It's important. It's important to know that I enjoy this person's company. I can spend time with them. So number one, we said... If we are going to strengthen our marriage covenants, we're going to put God first at the center of our marriage. 
Number two, we're going to delight in our spouses. Intentionally, we're going to delight in our spouse. Thirdly, have a shared family vision. And I love this one. Have a shared family vision. I really believe this is the, a key responsibility for you as a husband, for you as a man. Where are you going? Come before God and ask him, Lord, where do you want me to take these people? Where am I taking her? What have you called us to do as a family? What have you called us to do? It's important. When God was calling Abraham, the Bible says he picked him because he knew he would lead his family according to God's principles and God's word. He knew, God knew, this man has a connection with me. He will lead his family according to God's way, God's purpose. But listen, as a husband, when you find out that vision, when you find out what God has called you to do as a family, it's then your responsibility to share this vision. To bring buy-in, to communicate it well to your spouse so that it, is, it becomes a shared vision. Something that both of you will give your lives to. Something that both of you will share with your children. The Bible says in Amos 3 verse 3, is it, do two people walk hand in hand if they aren't, if they aren't going to the same place? Psalm 133, it says how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down Aaron's beard, down to the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hammon were falling on Mount Zion. For the Lord, and this is the beautiful part, for the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore, where there is unity. So, couples, come before God. Find out what's God's vision. What's God's purpose for you as a family? And finally, the fourth thing that I believe if we do, will strengthen our marriage cord. The third thing is guarding your heart. And I thank God that when we were putting this message together, it was a unified both of us as husband and wife need to guard our hearts. Guard your heart because the enemy of your soul, the enemy of marriage does not care who he comes through. His goal is to kill and to destroy. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Guarding your heart means you don't allow anything that can destroy your life, your marriage, and family to take root in your heart. Our hearts, friends, are like a garden that can produce good or bad fruit, depending on what is sown in it. Guard your heart. So husbands and wife, guard your heart against women or men, okay, other women or men, by being faithful to your spouse. Simple. Guard your heart from anything that will cause unfaithfulness to you in every form because sexual unfaithfulness weakens and breaks the marriage bond. It brings a lot of emotional pain. For you, if you're here and you're single, make a commitment to live a sexually pure life before you get married. It's important. Nothing, friends, breaks the marriage bond faster than unfaithfulness because it's such a, a, a breakdown of trust. And we can do it. We can. How do we do this? First of all, get rid of ungodly and unhealthy behaviors that will negatively affect the marriage bond. That, that is in any way or form. Some people get married, but they want to stay single. They still want to go out in the night and party with their single friends or as, you know, alone. Friends, the Bible says when you get married, you live and... I will say that again. <laughs> when you get married, you live and you cleave. So if you're not ready to do life with this one person, don't begin. <laughs> You cannot be a single married 
I, I still need to live my life the way I want. It doesn't work. It does not add value to strengthening the marriage bond. It doesn't. So any unhealthy habits, you know, whether it's coming home late, overworking, prioritizing, extended family, over. I'm not, we know these things. And I believe even as I'm sharing this, God is speaking to you that there are things that you need to begin to look at and say, if I want my marriage to be healthy, if I want to strengthen my bond between my wife and I, this needs to go. And may God speak to you in that area. If you have been unfaithful to your spouse, if you have had any kind of behavior like that, repent. Come before your wife or your husband and ask for forgiveness. Because also, God is able to heal the broken heart. He is able to heal where pain has been experienced. Praise the Lord. So today, these four things, there might be more, but just these four things, if we can practice them, I firmly believe that God will enable us to have strong, healthy, happy marriages and families. If we put God first, at the center of our marriage, God will give us the wisdom on how to navigate any storm. If we delight in our wives and in our husbands, there will be very little room for the enemy to come and bring comparison. If we have a shared vision, we will be like Nehemiah when the enemy started coming and telling him, come down, come down and we talk to you. And he said, listen, we have, I have an important task to work on. I don't have time to engage in any other conversation. When God has given us a vision as a family, we have something to pursue and give our lives to. We have no time for gossip and comparison. Praise the Lord. I believe if we guard our hearts from the onslaught of the enemy in, in any way, media, friends at work, the culture that is so prevalent, that celebrates unfaithfulness, if we guard our hearts, God will, as the third party to our marriages, will keep our marriages strong, will keep our marriages healthy, will keep our marriages happy. Praise the Lord. So I want to invite you right now. Would you take some time? I know God's been speaking to you as I shared. I don't know where you are on this journey. If you're single, this is the best time for you because you get to invest early in the right principles. So I want to invite you to just take time to pray. Bow your head and commit these things that I've spoken to God right now. Just commit them into God's hands and ask him, Lord, help me. Maybe for you, you have not had Christ at the center of your life or your marriage. Would you invite him right now? Maybe it's unfaithfulness. You didn't guard your heart. Okay, it's never too late. It's never too late. Friends online, I invite you to do the same. Our family online, would you take this time and just commit your marriage to God? Or maybe it's a friend that you know and they are going through such a rough time in their marriage. Would you take this time to pray for them? We thank you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, our God and King. We thank you for your presence here with us. We thank you for your word because the entrance of your word brings light opens our eyes to truth and that truth Lord sets us free you might be here today and you might be watching us online and you, you've never given your life to Christ Jesus is not only good for our marriages Jesus is central for our life he's central to our lives if we do not have Christ in our lives our lives are headed for destruction. The Bible tells us it is for this reason that Christ came. To seek and to save those of us that have never given our lives to him. So I want to invite you, if you've never committed your life to Christ, and you're here in person, but you're also online, would you consider making that decision right now? Don't put it off. The Bible also tells us tomorrow is promised to no one. We only have today. God loves you, friends. God loves you. And he keeps sending people to speak to you. He keeps sending the word. He keeps nudging on your heart. 
all He asks from us is to commit our lives to Him. And God will give us a life full of purpose. God will forgive us of our sins. So if that is you, I want to ask you, would you just raise your hand here in person? Would you raise your hand? And I want to pray with you. If you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you know it, God is speaking to you right now, up in the overflow, right here, would you raise your hand? We want to pray with you. But if you're online, if God is speaking to you, there's an emoji of a hand that you can just click, and it will alert us to the decision that you have made. We want to pray with you concerning that. Father, I thank you for all the hands that are raised. I thank you for the hearts that are surrendering to you right now. I ask God that you'll come into their lives. I pray, Lord, that you will put them today on the right path. Forgive all our disobedience and sin in Jesus' name. God, and for the rest of us that are committing to you our marriages, we ask God that you will come in strengthen our marriage bond enable us lord to fulfill god's purpose for our marriages in jesus name and everybody said amen come on let's appreciate pastor ken downtown we can do better than that let's appreciate pastor ken but also if you've been blessed by God's word, why don't we give Jesus all the praise? He deserves it all. Come on. Amen. Well, if you put up your hand right here and you've just accepted Christ in your, in your heart, let me tell you that is the best decision you will ever make in your life. And as a church, as a family, we would love to walk a journey with you. And I believe uh, our host ushers have connected with you. They've given you a small book that will start you off on this journey. But at the end of this worship experience, don't be in a rush to go out. One of our pastors would love to connect with you. But those that are joining us online would also love to connect with you. And I believe that you put that hand emoji in the chat section. We would love to know who has given their lives to Christ. But I need you to wait because at the end of this worship experience, I will tell you something that you need to do before you get off this service. Well, one of the parts of our services that is so dear to me is when we get an opportunity to worship God through our generosity. Uh, here at Bototo Church, we're a generous church. We love giving because we know what generosity does. And this is what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. It says that God loves a cheerful giver. And two reasons as to why God loves a cheerful giver. One, because God gives and so he, does, he requires us to be just like him. And so while you're doing it, just know that you are representing Christ. But the second thing is your generosity makes a difference in someone's life. Lives are being transformed every time that you do give. In fact, uh, two days ago, all across all our campuses, we had children having their children's camp being blessed our children were being blessed through your generous and so today while you give i need you to remember that you are making a difference and so what other church it's time for us to it's time for us to give and this is how we give in the blue bags that's where we put our regular tithe and offering and in the red bags that's where we put our build god's house contribution now, this helps us to plant more campuses so that we are able to reach many more with the good news of Jesus. Now, we have envelopes for both tithe and offering and build God's house fund. If you need one, just put up your hand and the ushers will help pass one to you. But also we know there are people that would prefer electronic uh, giving. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to put up your hand. The host ashes have a small booklet that they will send to you. It has all the information that you need. But also I know uh, the media team is putting some information on the screen. Utilize that information so that you're able to give. Uh, but for those of you that are online with us today, uh, there's a very short video that is going to come up right now that has all the details that you need for your giving. Let's watch the video. 
please take a moment to visit our website at watotochurch.com forward slash giving to find the most convenient giving option for you. You can also scan the QR code on your screen to open up our giving page. If you'd like to give via mobile money, you can find all the instructions for your specific carrier and respective codes. A secure option for those who wish to give through Visa or MasterCard debit or credit cards is also available. Details for other giving options including checks, bank transfer or agent banking can also be found on this page. Should you stay close to one of our 14 celebration points, we have secure gift boxes available for you to drop off your envelope if this is more convenient. And for those of you watching from Juba, South Sudan, we have giving options especially for you through Bank Transfer and M. Gurush. Thank you for your faithfulness in helping to build God's kingdom.
Come on, if you've experienced the goodness of God, why don't you give Him all the praise? Come on. He has been so good to us. And also in a special way, I would love to appreciate everyone that has served us today. Let's appreciate all our host ushers, the worship team, the choir, the media team. Come on, let's clap and let's appreciate them. Come on. And as we come to the close of our service today, just a couple of reminders. This Friday, Power Sex Money is back and our theme is Head or Helper. Come, let's find out if it actually matters. Right here, downtown and online, 6.30 p.m. And Missio, if you need more information on Missio, write in person, just walk to the tables in the foyer. And if you're watching online, just go to our website and you'll find all the information there. That's right. If, and also, if you need any information about what is happening here at Watoto, go to our website, Watoto, www.watotochurch.com. But also, I encourage all of us to download our Watoto app. On there, you will get to know what is happening right here. And as we get to uh, close our service today, I want to encourage uh, all our friends that are watching us online uh, that if you've just given your life to Christ or if you're visiting us for the very first time, we would love to connect with you. First of all, um, there's a link that is being dropped into the chat section and that link will take you to our virtual lounge where one of our pastors is waiting for you. They would love to connect with you. So right now, go into the chat section, click that link and it will take you to the virtual lounge. But our prayer is that God will bless you wherever He has blessed you, that you will experience the hand of God in your life. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us. May God richly bless you. Have a blessed week. What other church?